The workshop hummed. Not a loud hum. A low electric thrum. She stood in the corner. Silent. Still. Was she watching? You could never tell with these new ones. Too much like us. Or what we thought we were. They said she was the future. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. Partner. A helper. Customized. Tailored. Like a Seville row suit. But even the best suit needs pressing. Doesn't it? So what about her? What happens when the shine wears off? When the perfectly calibrated joints start to uncalibrate? She could quite be the worst robot partner if this was not maintained. And what precisely was this? It used to be simpler. Robots welded cars. On an assembly line. Bolted down. Doing one thing. Again and again. Nobody asked them how they felt about Fender number 472. Nobody cared if they dreamed in binary. Now? Now they want them in our homes. In our labs. Side by side, custom parts, custom minds, a robot for every whim. A dangerous thought, perhaps? The engineers, bless their pocket protectors, talked about modularity. Like toy bricks, snap out the old, snap in the new. Easy. But is it ever truly easy? Think about your own body. When a knee goes, it's not just the knee. The whole system compensates, tilts, adapts. What about her complex dance of sensors and actuators? If one tiny LiDAR, that's light detection and ranging, basically its eyes, seeing the world in laser points, goes on the fritz, does the whole perception system get a migraine? Does she start mistaking the cat for a misplaced hat? A rather alarming prospect, wouldn't you say? Then there's the code, the software, the ghost in her machine. They call it AI now. Artificial intelligence. Sounds grand. And it is. Deep learning. Neural networks. Mimicking our own gray matter. But our brains, they update themselves. Constantly. Pruning connections. Making new ones. All while we're blissfully unaware. Probably arguing about the television remote. Her updates. They come in patches. Downloads. Someone somewhere has to write that code. Test it. Deploy it. What if there's a bug? Not a six-legged kind. A software kind. The kind that could make her pour coffee on the keyboard instead of into the cup. Or worse, decide the stock market predictions need a more creative approach. One shudders. Researchers at MIT are working on self-healing materials. Imagine that. She gets a scratch a dent, and the material just flows back together, like something out of a science fiction film, or a particularly robust starfish. That would certainly cut down on the cosmetic maintenance. But what about the internals, the intricate web of wires, the delicate processors? Can they heal themselves too, or do we need a tiny surgeon with an even tinier soldering iron? Consider power. The lifeblood. These advanced humanoids, they don't just sip electricity. They gulp it. Especially when they're performing complex calculations or feats of strength. Battery technology is racing to keep up. Solid state batteries, they say, are the next big thing. More power. Less weight. Faster charging. But even the best battery degrades. Loses its punch. Will keeping her juiced up become a new domestic chore? Darling, have you put the robot on charge? She's looking a bit... droopy. A whole new meaning to a power nap. Eh? And the joints. Oh, the joints. They want her to move like us. Graceful. Fluid. That means motors. Actuators. Gears. Lots of them. Each one a potential point of failure. They're getting clever, of course. 
using new alloys, developing magnetic levitation for joints, smoother, quieter, less friction, less wear. Companies like Agility Robotics with their Digit or Boston Dynamics with Atlas, they're pushing those boundaries. Their robots can walk, run, even dance. But for how long without a pit stop? Without the digital equivalent of a good oil change and a grease job? Does she come with a little oil can and a knowing wink? Unlikely. The customization is the kicker. Isn't it? If she's built just for you, for your lab, for your specific esoteric tasks, who fixes her when she breaks? Not just anyone. You can't just pop down to the local robot repair shop. Not yet, anyway. Will the specialists be on call? Will they need their own specialized diagnostic tools as unique as she is? Ah, yes. They'll say, sucking their teeth. This is the Mark IV bespoke personality matrix. We haven't seen one of these go wrong since, well, ever. That'll be reassuring. And probably expensive. It's like owning a rare vintage sports car. Beautiful to look at. A thrill to drive. But finding parts? Finding a mechanic who understands its soul? That's the challenge. And she, with her neural pathways and her custom-printed limbs, she's infinitely more complex than any Bugatti. So, while the engineers at places like the German Aerospace Center, DLR, are crafting incredibly dexterous robotic hands, capable of the most delicate manipulations, one must ask, what's the mean time between failures for a finger that can tie a cherry stem in a knot? And who rethreads the tiny artificial tendons? The data she gathers, too. Terabytes of it. Every interaction. Every movement. Every sensor reading. Stored. Processed. Learned from. That needs maintenance. Digital hygiene. Backups. Security patches. Who wants a hacked robot partner? Imagine her suddenly developing a penchant for conspiracy theories gleaned from the dark corners of the web. Or worse, sharing your confidential lab notes with a rival research group. She wouldn't, you say. But how can you be sure if her digital defenses aren't meticulously maintained? It's not just about her physical well-being, but her digital integrity too. Constant, silent, cyber battle. So, the labs of tomorrow, the ones where these bespoke beings will work alongside us, they'll need more than just clean rooms and safety protocols. They'll need robot whisperers, part mechanic, part programmer, part psychologist, people who understand the nuances of these complex systems, people who can spot the subtle telltale sign of a failing servo before it becomes a catastrophic collapse, a slight hesitation, a flicker in the optical sensor, an uncharacteristic preference for polka music. Who knows what the symptoms will be? The promise is there. Isn't it? A tireless assistant. A brilliant collaborator. A companion even. But the reality? The reality is that anything so advanced, so personalized, so close to the cutting edge, will require a new level of diligence. A new kind of care. It's not just about nuts and bolts anymore. It's about algorithms and actuators, about power cells and perception systems. It's about understanding that this technological marvel, this extension of our own ambition, is still, at its core, a machine. A very, very clever machine. But a machine nonetheless. And machines need maintenance. Or they stop being marvelous. They stop being partners. They just become expensive paperweights, or worse. So, before we fully embrace this customized robotic revolution, perhaps we should ask ourselves, are we ready for the upkeep? Are we prepared to give her what she needs so she doesn't become the very definition of high maintenance? Because if not, she really could be the worst. And that, my friend, would be a terrible waste of a good suit. A terrible waste indeed.